Hey, thanks for joining us for another episode of UEN PD TV. This time we're gonna be talking about Adobe Rush and how you can edit video very easy with this program. I'm here with... Jamie Gardner, also a technical trainer at the Utah Education Network. And Jamie and I have had a lot of experience with using Adobe Rush, which is one of the programs you get in the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. Did I say that right? Yes. And Creative how does Cloud that work? Suite. We get that now with every... Yeah, every educator in Utah can access the Adobe Creative Cloud and students in seventh through 12th grade, I believe, have access at all of their school buildings. That's right, so everybody teaching middle, junior, high school, you can use this program. And for the elementary school students and teachers, you also get access to Adobe Spark, which has another video editing program built in, which is a little bit easier than this, but has some really good features. Yeah, Adobe Spark is a great transition program into Adobe Rush, and then Adobe Rush is a great transition into Adobe Premiere. Perfect. So let's take a look at some of the tools that are built into it and how you can get started using it. So once Adobe Creative Cloud is installed on your computer, in the top menu bar, you'll see the Adobe Creative Cloud icon. When you click on that, you'll have options for the entire Creative Cloud suite, um, and we're going to scroll down until we get to Adobe Premiere Rush. Cool. Now, I've already installed it on my computer, so that's why mine says open. But if you hadn't installed it yet, you would click like either update or upload, and then it would get all set on your computer. Great. So once you land on your dashboard, we're going to start by creating a new project. The great thing about Adobe Rush, as you can see on the dashboard, it's pretty simple to get started. So we create a new project. Down here in the bottom left corner, we're going to give our project a name. And then from the desktop, which is what we're showing right now, we can choose the files that we want to use to create our video. You also have the option to pull these files from your Google Drive or from other areas of your, of your computer. So we've already set up um, a lesson plan that has these movies attached in a Dropbox folder. So if you're a teacher learning to use Rush and you want to share it with your students, you can download this folder from a link we'll give you at the end of the episode and make a movie just like this one. So Jamie, if I want to pick movies, do I just grab all of them or should I put them in order? You know, when I'm, before I get into Adobe Rush, I try to set my files up in a way that it makes it easier for me to know what order they're going to go in. So these files are already numbered. It looks like one through maybe 12. So we can grab a few of those to get started and you can add videos or images. It can be either type. It doesn't have to be just a video. Cool, and if you've ever used like iMovie or any of those editing, you know uh, those programs, you'll drop them in the videos and then rearrange them. But what Adobe's gonna do is, like you said, since we picked them in order, it's gonna create the movie in that order. Correct, and also I wanna point out, we have a sound file already included, so you can upload music maybe behind your videos. Um, and so we'll, yeah, let's grab that sound file as well. Okay, so I'm gonna click Create, the little blue button in the bottom right-hand corner. It takes just a couple seconds to prepare the media, but you shouldn't lose patience because it's going to space. Since the 21st century start, oh look, it's already done. There we go. Perfect, so now we have those six assets included into our first movie. Um, if we press play, you'll see the entire thing that just gets started with our first asset. But down here in the bottom is where we're going to do most of our editing and then we just have a viewer up here in the top so you can see as you go along what your movie looks like. It looks a lot like iMovie. It does. Preview up here, timeline down here. But Jamie, where are all the tools? Right, so we have some tool options down here in the bottom left. Um, so we can do some, some clipping, we can add uh, or duplicate the different media that we include here. We can delete things. We can also expand so that we can see um, the audio tracks here below. And also this last button on the bottom will show us all of the levels that we can add video or um, images up here at the top and then all of our audio tracks down here at the bottom. So how many video and audio tracks can we add total? So total, there's seven that you can add, um, four audio and image, or sorry, four video and image tracks at the top and then three audio down at the bottom. So that's pretty cool. We can do picture in picture. And... Yes, yeah. When, when we start layering here at the top, that enables us to do picture in picture. Um, we could have multiple things happening at the same time, which makes it, and, and because it's drag and drop, really simple for our students to get started with. 
How much time do you think as a teacher, you taught high school, correct? I did. If you were teaching your students how to create a project in Adobe Rush, how much time would you spend actually teaching Adobe Rush? You know, I think I would get them started on the front end and do a lot of the pre-planning. When it comes to actually using the program, really just showing them how to get their assets in. And then after that, maybe a few tips and let them kind of go on their own. It's one of those programs that students are going to be able to easily jump into and get started on. So do you think the teacher has to be an Adobe Rush video editing expert no. to use it in the classroom? No, definitely not. I think that if you if you can get them started creating that project like we did, maybe show them that there are some tool options here on the bottom. There are some tool options up there in the in the top right hand corner. Very self-explanatory to help them get started. So my experience as a third, fourth, and fifth grade classroom teacher was I'd show the kids a program, and then as some of the kids became experts and found things out, have them come up to the front of the class and let them teach the new skill that they learned. Then they get some ownership, and I didn't have to be an expert. Exactly, and I, I think that's a great point, that we shouldn't hold ourselves back from using a new tool just because we're not the expert yet. There are enough people in the room that they can all kind of join in and, and help add to the discussion and, and add to the experience. Have you ever showed a tech uh, tool like this to teachers and they always say the same thing, they go, if I just had more time to play with it, right? <laughs> right, so. right. Get more comfortable with it. Really, this is the type of tool, yeah. just get them started. If you know how to add your assets in, then let them go from there. Awesome, so you know what? You want more time learning how to use the program? Use it with students. Exactly, yeah. right. So this summer, that was kind of my experience. I, I had a video that I needed to create for a class. I just jumped in, the user interface is so simple I could get started and, and made a video really quickly. Can we see your video that you made? Great, that'd awesome. be great. Okay, Michael, so here are some of the projects that I've created using Adobe Rush. Um, and the one I was going to talk about is the one up there in the top left corner that says, Why Video? So what I did for this project is I took um, a PowerPoint presentation that I had created, I downloaded that as JPEG images and brought them into Adobe Rush. Um, so it kind of goes, and then I narrated it from there. So it goes through a bit of a PowerPoint presentation first, mm -hmm. and then it transitions into a video that I had also created. Cool, so these right here are just your slides from PowerPoint. These are, these are my slides from PowerPoint. And then if we um, fast forward here a little bit, then you'll see some video that I created about um, why we should use video with our students. And this starts into a video about an adventure um, with my, my dog, Max. So instead of just having your students write a paper or show a picture of um, an animal or a vacation or anything that they would like to tell a story about, we can add video in instead. Okay, that's dog abuse right there, isn't it? Oh no, he's got <laughs> he a life preserver it. He's got on, on a okay. life jacket. Right yeah, on. so it was super fun. So then also in this video, because this was a project for my master's class, um, also in this video, I include at the end, a video that my stu my own children made this summer using Adobe Rush. So over the summer, we created a video on digital citizenship mm -hmm. um, where my kids, they were the actors. Oh, fun. Yeah, so um, we used the ISTE standards for digital citizenship. My, my three kids were the actors. They started out helping me um, edit the video and then mom kind of finished it in the end because it was summer break after all but really easy tool for them to use. They were, um, it was easy for us to upload all of the assets into Adobe Rush and do some of the, use some of the titles and the transitions. So those are the titles you made yourself right in Rush? I did, awesome. yeah. And then also some of the titles just are included as part of the package. So Jamie, you said we had tools over there on the left by you, and then there's some up here on the right. Talk us through what these do up here. Okay. so. Um, that first tool on the top allows you to add a title or a subtitle, really any text on top of your video. So we'll just click and we can drag and drop the different um, titles or different styles. And using these different layers up here, we'll be able to impose that on top of the video or the image that's already happening. Okay, so I can just drag text down and either put it on the video or in front of it, like have like a black yeah, screen. Yeah, you can have a black screen with your title up front, or you top. can put it on a different layer and we'll have more of an overlay effect. Well, that was simple. I just clicked on it and started typing. Very simple. <laughs> and our students, because of the, the icons, when you hover over the icons, it will tell you what it is. And so, so if they're not sure, then it's very easy for them to, 
to kind of do a tutorial as they're going along. Yeah, what is this next one? Do? The next one are transitions. transitions. Yeah, cool. so we have just three basic transitions, the cross dissolve, the dip to black or the dip to white, just makes it a little nicer when you're going from maybe one video into another video. Um, so it's not such a direct cut. Nice. The third one tells us color. Color, so if we want to add filters to any of our images or videos, we can do that. I want to take Turn. that modern video I have of the train and instead of have it being color like it was filmed, I'm going to make it black and white. Look at that. Right. And it cool. gives it, yeah, a, a very different feel. This makes it seem a little more old fashioned. Old fashioned. Thank you. Yeah. A little more old fashioned. Okay. okay. So this last button here that looks like uh, a robot talking, that's audio. And what does that let us do? Yeah. That will allow us to adjust the volume of any of the audio within our tracks. Okay, and then the last one looks like a cropping tool. And hey, look at that. It is, it's a cropping tool. So this works great if you um, maybe need to crop some of your images. Yeah. So we have some space here on the top and bottom. If we just click on that image, we'll be able to expand the image with our, um, our handles in the corners. Make sure we're filling that entire screen. Oh, that looks good. We can slide side to side to make sure we get the part of the, the image that we like. Cool. This also works great with your, if you wanted to do side-by-side um, -side video or images at the same time, you can have one image fill half the screen and the other image fill the other half. All great. Right. So yeah. we got our that, tools. Yep, I think that's about it for our tools. Um, so when we're done, we want to maybe publish this somewhere, yeah. share our video. How do we save a video? Super easy. So right now our video is already saved within Adobe Rush. But you if mean we if want, I just close it, it'll still be here? It's still going to be there. You sure? But it's, it's more like this. We've got all of our audio tracks, all of our files that we can manipulate. So when we want to share this, maybe it's just one full video, we can okay. come up here and click on share. All right. We have a few options. We can share it um, to YouTube or Facebook. Facebook or Instagram. We can also just download it to our own computers as an MP4 file. All right. And then when I'm finished, I just click export. Click export. And it's, it's rendering. Saving our video now. And this is going to save it as just a video file so you can share it however you'd like from there. Cool. I like that. You can just have a student send it straight to YouTube, send it straight to Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw when I was downloading this, uh, that there was a little icon for a phone. Is this available for mobile devices as well? The, it is. It's available on mo mobile devices, um, and you can do all of your editing on a mobile device, but you can also share your video between your mobile device and your desktop or your laptop. So you can edit the same video mm -hmm. um, on either device. So a student could start filming on the iPad, edit on the iPad, shut it down, sign in on a computer, and finish their project there. Exactly. Cool. It's a great feature and, and because our, our students are taking more and more video on their phone, it's really nice that they can complete the entire video on their phone or their iPad or they can switch back and forth. How many um, different like devices can a student be signed into on the Adobe Cloud at the same time? That's a great question. So our students can be signed into two different devices. Um, so they have access at school and then they have access to one device at their house or on their, or on their cell phone or their iPad. So they can be signed into two. So that's why the one time I tried to sign in on my other computer, it said you already have two devices and I just picked one and turned it off and yes. was ready to go on that new one. Right. It's super simple the way that they've um, created kind of that school to home connection to be able to manage your devices. Okay. So Jamie, we've just taken a video. We've added um, some pictures, some images. We can make our own voiceover if we want. Mm -hmm. All of these skills are things like planning, uh, telling a story, and you would have to write a script. So we're hitting a lot of those language art standards, but it seems like we're kind of going beyond that. Yeah, so yeah. by having our students create a video, we're moving up Bloom's taxonomy to those higher levels where they're creating something and digging a little bit deeper. Um, as our teachers are starting to learn more about the SAMR model, we're also kind of pushing this, level, this lesson to a higher level on the SAMR model. Um, and, and also when we're talking about technology integration, we really just moved this lesson um, into some of those ISTE standards that promote um, a good lesson design and good collaboration in learning a new tool with your students. 
So speaking of the ISTE standards, we're starting to align our UEN classes to these ISTE standards, mm -hmm. but we're also aligning a lot of our curriculum in the state to it. And you said that we were pushing it to a higher level, like we were going from beyond substitution to really transforming what the students are creating. Which of these ISTE standards do you think we would be hitting for educators that are using Adobe Rush? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So slow down just a little bit. <laughs> so depending on what it is that you have your students create, you could be hitting a lot of these. If you had your students create a video about digital citizenship or what they've learned through digital citizenship, you could be create, you could be hitting some of those standards. But also um, Collaborator is a good one mm -hmm. that we're touching on because we're learning a new tool along with our students. We don't have to be the experts in um, knowing the tool already. We can mm -hmm. learn as we go. And we're also hitting that designer standard. Pretty much all of those, um, because we're using technology, we're creating an authentic learning environment, and we're exploring some different ways to design a lesson that helps our students use more technology. And let's go back to that citizen standard real quick. We're also teaching kids how to use uh, video and pictures that they find ethically and citing their resources. And hopefully they're getting that content from some awesome place like Utah's, Utah's online, online library. library. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. They're, they're, I think what teachers don't understand always about the ISTE standards, they're not just one more thing to think about. They're definitely a partnership with what we're already doing and what we're already teaching and just kind of helping guide our teachers as, as they're using technology in their classrooms. Okay, so Jamie, if a teacher wants to use those same videos that we just talked about with the trains, it's a short video about the golden spike, you can go and get all of those files and a script handout for your students. Just go to bit.ly ly slash uen dash rush. You'll see a Google Drive folder come up. You can download it by clicking the drop down arrow next to the title of the folder, then choose download, and it puts all those files into your computer ready to go. But if you don't use Google Drive and you would prefer, we also have the same files in a folder at Dropbox, same thing, click the download and then direct download, and the shortened URL for that is bit.ly slash 2019 rush train. So Jamie, I wanna learn more about Adobe Rush and learn how to make a video like yours myself. How do I get started? So UEN offers a really great course that covers a lot of the um, Adobe products in the Creative Cloud. So you can go to uen.org and register for our online MOOC course to get started. MOOC, so? MOOC, so that means you can start when you're ready and you can finish when you're done. It, it spans about a year's time frame, um, and you go at your own pace. So this is Rob Bentley's class, right? It is. It goes over Adobe Rush, but it also has two other programs built into it. You're gonna learn everything you need to know about Spark, as well as Adobe UX Design, which is teaching how to make your own apps. So all three of those are built into that course. So if you wanted to have one of us come out and do a training at your school, Jamie or I, or anybody from the UEN PD team, we will come out and do a one hour training, uh, maybe 90 minutes on Adobe Rush. Mm -hmm. Just go to uen.org slash development, and you'll see a little place where it says request a presentation. Thanks for watching another episode of UEN PD TV. We'll see you next time.